Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about my experiences with studying engineering at McMaster University. The discipline that I study particularly is chemical and bioengineering. So some of the stuff that I talk about in this video will relate to chemical and bioengineering a little bit more. In a nutshell, I really did enjoy my time there. And you know, I think the degree I got was I mean, it's a STEM degree, so you can't go wrong with a STEM degree, but would I have chosen a different discipline? I think I would, but anyway, that'll be for another video. Today's video is just gonna be my experiences with what it was like studying engineering at McMaster. So first year. In first year, you pretty much take all the courses with everybody. There's no defined discipline. You don't get to choose your stream. And in second year, that is when you do that. And that depends on the popularity and your grade. So if you have, well, around my time, if you have a GPA of six, which is around um, high 60s, you pretty much get your first choice. It's not too difficult to get the choice that you want. And there are certain disciplines that are really harder, that are harder to get in based because a lot of people want to get into a stream and that would be mechanical. And for mechanical during my time, you need to have around uh, eight GPA, which is around high, like no, mid seventies. So if you don't know, in McMaster, we operate on a 12 point scale and it's not a four point scale. So um, yeah. So course material, um, you pretty much take around six courses per semester and if for me, I did chemical and bioengineering. I didn't really have a lot of options when it comes to elective. All the electives were dedicated to taking bio courses or bioengineering courses, although most of the bioengineering courses didn't come later on until your fourth or fifth year. And, and I didn't really feel like it got that much exposure to the bio side of things, even though that is what my degree is. And there's probably just like one lab towards the final year which is like a bioengineering course that you can take with life science students actually I think it was health science students but in second year we did have to take an anatomy course with nursing students health science students and life science students no sorry we did have to take an anatomy course with nurses and health science students and this is where the engineers in this course did really bad because we have six or seven courses a semester and these this course is just based on memorizing all the anatomy parts which you know engineers are just not typically good at that but uh, nurses and health science students are probably exposed to these terminologies a lot more than we were so the average for engineers was around 50 and it was pretty low and for nurses it was around 70s and health science obviously 90s they were doing so well um, i did have a couple of uh, friends who unfortunately did fail it and they have to retake it. It's not a big deal if you fail a course at McMaster, you just have to retake it, but you have to be careful not to fail too much or else they will tell you that um, you fail any more then you will have to get kicked out of the school. And I only know one person who got that warning letter, but he ended up graduating. For workload, I find that the first year was definitely very challenging for me at least, um, probably the first and second year because you're just not used to all of this work that they're dumping on you and you know, you're just constantly having lab assignments and all that stuff. And if you are going into something bio related, like I did bioengineering on top of chemical engineering, um, prepare to work even more because there's a lot more lab work that you have to do and a lot more writing and essays and things like that which wasn't fun at all. My biggest tip is take second year math in the summer after first year. It will ease up your workload so much and it is a lot easier as well. That was also one of the most challenging courses that I felt like um, I took and that was second year math. So take that in the summer if you can. And then after that, I just took as much summer courses as I can in the summer, um, which is a good or and a bad thing. And that's because if you do take that thing, you don't really 
have room for co-op, but I'll talk about that in the next section. People have this misconception that in engineering, it gets harder as you go up in the later years, but I actually found that to be the reverse. It was hard in the first two years and it just slowly gets easier. And I think there is a rumor that in first year or second year, they're trying to weed out all the people who can't make it and then things get easier. But I don't know if that's true, but for me, I felt like I developed better studying strategies and I learned how to manage my course load a lot better. And also when you're seeing also the people in your class, you're going to see them in every single class. It's not like um, other degrees like psychology where you're taking class with like many different people. But in the, when you're studying engineering, the field is so disciplined that you're going to be following the same people and you develop friendships and you develop study groups and we all help each other. And that's one thing that I really liked about my master was that it didn't feel like it was that competitive at all. Um, at least not for me, um, you find a group and we all help each other. If you're not there for a particular class, then you can just share notes. And sometimes we would get together in the library to compare answers for assignments. And, you know, it was, it was a pretty good experience. And I think all of us, we wanted everybody to succeed and we wanted everybody to graduate. So there was no competitiveness towards each other at all. And I think after the math, which I find up to be hardest, I don't think anything else is really hard. It is definitely the workload that is just the hardest part is managing all the assignments and all the things that are due. And if you're the type that feels confident about just doing the things that are worth the highest percentage, then you should because you know, you can still pass and it will decrease your workload. And I know some people who did that, but I was just not that type that felt comfortable doing that. And I think the assignments did help with the final exam, which is worth like 60%. So if you do the assignment, some of them do show up in the exam. So it's, it's just felt safer to do everything. For social life, I didn't feel like I had that much of a social life while I was studying there. Um, you know, you go to class in the morning, I come back and I take a little break and then I just work on assignments, study until I go to bed and then wake up and repeat all over again. Um, Fridays, I take a break and I'll study. Saturday, I go back to catching up on anything that I missed from that week and then Sunday, I take a break. And then Monday to Friday is like another really intense um, going to class, trying to keep up with everything, that kind of schedule. So. It is true what they say that you just don't really get a lot of free time when you're in engineering and most of the people that I went to school with felt the same way and most of the time is dedicated to studying but I don't I think it's good in a way that it kind of prepare you to handle a lot of workload and when you're working it I find that that transition helped a lot um, and when you're working you're not the amount of work that you do while you're working never amounts to the amount that I had to do when I was in school. So, and I did find that I enjoy working a lot more than in school. Whereas I feel like people who didn't do engineering may feel the opposite of that. One of my friends would ask me, do you ever feel guilty when you take breaks to watch a TV show because you feel like you should be studying? And unfortunately, that was exactly how I felt. So I definitely limited watching, you know, the series until towards the end of my exam when I have a couple of days before school starts again. Um, just like mini shows, but nothing that will make me binge watch because it just wasn't worth it. I mean, Master, I think there were quite a bit of parties, but um, I wasn't really into them. And I don't think a lot of my friends were, um, or my classmates were as well. I think most of our time was spent on school, but that could just depend on personality type. One thing that I really did not like about my master was their co-op program, which really, kind of suck. You don't really get much help in looking for a job and 
you have to depend on yourself to get one and there was really no guidance in that i didn't even start looking until my final year because i have been told by everyone around or just word up on the street that you it's impossible to get it a co-op job in your first or second year and usually people don't get into their last year which i don't think that's true because waterloo is able to do that um so unfortunately it's not a co-op school and i find that um it does help a lot after working because you've already figured out what you like and what you don't like um you know what kind of jobs you want to do and co-op really helped that when i graduated i had to struggle to figure all that out and i felt like i was you know five years behind compared to waterloo graduates who already figured all that out so the co-op program it could be better and i do think that it helps a lot but overall i think it was a pretty good school i did enjoy my time there um and yeah so if you have any questions just let me know and i'll answer them for you i'm also trying to grow my channel and give more career related advice and experiences that i've gone through so if you're into that please subscribe to my channel it will definitely help me a lot um, so thanks for watching bye